Okay guys, so here is the update on the Riley Pathfinder for Practical Classics magazine. So we have the leather colorant, paint, dye, whatever you want to call it, solution, ink, whatever it is. Um, it's paint, basically. That's obviously what we've put on here already as a base coat, as you've seen, with wiping the color on and then stippling a coat on. That's what we've done now, as you can see, over the whole seat. So the whole seat has now had that put on it. So the next stage, is we've got a spray but before we do that we've got to lightly sand with one of the sanding pads this is a 280 grit so you're going to think blimey that's really coarse no because it's a foam interior one so the thing is you're not pushing down if you can imagine my hand is the leather you're not going to be pushing down on it like this you're literally just going to lightly go over the surface like this so all it's doing is removing and denibbing anything on the surface here which is what we've done on the base this sort of section already um, you know to it already so that we can sort of show you that before we begin so you can understand that we're going to be spraying the color on as well today um, and we're going to be using the Devilbis SRI Pro Light S spray gun which is like a sort of fine touch-up gun but it works perfectly for what we're doing with the leather repairs it's absolutely brilliant for you know we find it brilliant for anything that's water-based or even solvent sort of products in our industry um, so it works perfectly well but to be fair we don't have any solvent paints or anything like that because it's all water-based products so that's the SRI Pro Light Devilbis spray gun that we're going to be using. This just is a, the new ones now come blue. This is just the original one um, that they did in this sort of orangey colour. I quite like the colour actually, I think it's quite funky. I keep meaning to get a blue one out, but every time I get it out I'm thinking, nah, I like this one. So that's what we're going to be using anyway. Obviously we need to filter the paint as well. So that's one thing that we've got to do before you do any spray painting, you've got to filter the paint. We have already filtered the paint that we're going to be using. Um, here as you can see with our paint filters so that is already filtering through there and that is obviously just sat it the, the, that, as soon as I put that back down it's going to fill again but that is filtered all the paint that you can sort of see in the jug there anyway so that's already filtered off um, ready to go in the spray gun we, we're going to be using minimal amount to what we've got here I mean this jug is completely full um, but you, you we're good to spray this we're going to use the tiniest amount you can think of you're not going to use an awful lot when you're spraying you use obviously a lot more when you're putting it on by hand um, and stuff like that because obviously the sponge is absorbing some of the material so we're going to lightly sand then we're going to alcohol wipe down and blow off with the airline and then we're going to start spraying we'll put the paint into the spray gun and then we're going to start spraying but what we're going to do we're going to spray this in two sections we're going to do the the top first or the base first it doesn't really matter which one but we're going to put pieces of paper in here um, like this so we are going to put paper in here all the way along like so and we're going to feed the paper underneath like this. The reason for doing that is when we're spraying the top, you've got this section here where you're going to end up with spraying here. You're going to get spray dust sort of appearing here and here, which is going to give you a rough area. That's not what we want to achieve here. We don't want to achieve any of these rough areas. So we're going to insert paper here all the way along um, so that we can spray the top. And then we're going to pick the paper up once it's all dry and spray the, the bottom here as well and just tape them very, very lightly along the top with little bits of tape so it doesn't affect any of the paintwork. And then we're going to spray the bottom in the same way so we don't get any blowback from where we're spraying this way and we don't get any of the spray just going on here creating this dull area to appear, which is what we don't want. Um, you know, you do get that sometimes when you're painting car seats or if you're missing areas, it's what we call dry line edge painting. So you've just got to make sure you avoid those dry line areas because, yes, they can be got out, but it's just more work that you're creating because you're creating this. Basically, what's happening is the, the paint, as it's atomizing into the air, is forming and drying and landing on the leather before it gets on here. And it's landing on here and it's actually landing on here dry. So it's creating a very rough area. You're going to end up with something very, very similar to your sandpaper, if you're not careful, feeling on this surface, which is what you don't want. So... We're going to sand, alcohol wipe, and then we're going to put the paper in, and then we're going to spray. So as you can see with the base, you sh hopefully you can sort of tell the differences here, where we've sanded these, this sort of pleated section all the way along here. All this has been sanded ready, and that's just, you can maybe see the odd high point here, um, where, which is what the purpose of this is. I can just still slightly feel that. So that's just going to want a little bit of a, more of a D-nib on there as well, just to sort of make that feel a bit smoother. That, that feels fine now, so that's, I'm, I'm happy with that. 
another tiny bit just there, but that's okay. So yeah, that's, that's good. So they're, they're feeling great. So we're gonna do that over the whole thing. So you're, just, you're not putting any pressure on, as I say. You're literally, as you can clearly see with the pad, we are literally just lightly sanding over the surface. And the purpose of that is just to denib the areas so that when we spray, we get a very nice, beautiful leather feel to the surface. It may sound very rough. Obviously, it's sandpaper at the end of the day on a sanding block, and we are going over the surface, and then we're just feeling. You can see these little bits here, hopefully, which is high points from where we were sponging on and picking up bits of dirt and grime and dust as we were going along, and bits of dirt and grime landing in the painted surface before it was drying and things like that, which it happens all the time, and you just need to address those and um, you know, sand those little areas out. So they're feeling, that's feeling quite nice. So again, straight up to the top, and we're just gonna go over those and sand those down as well. Simple as that. You're not putting any pressure on, as you can clearly see. We're just literally letting it glide over the surface just to denib these areas completely. And that's all we're trying to do, is just to denib all the areas so that when we spray, we've got a really nice, beautiful feel to the surface that feels completely original and just like leather. It's also going to help with any sort of imperfections that we've got there at the moment to so just iron those out and just sort of help with the where all the cracking was just to help flatten those a little bit more as well and make that a little bit better also. If you get any areas like that there where it's obviously been a slight high patch of um, filler, you can see the white area here. You can touch those sort of things up with like a paintbrush. You can just about see that and that little section there. That one, I can still feel that actually on the surface. So we need to sand that a little bit more. That could just be a little bit of a high patch that we've missed with the fillers when we've been going over, you know, sanding the fillers down. That's not shown up until we've painted, which is just quite natural when you're doing this sort of work anyway. That feels fine now, that feels great. So. We're back onto the pleats again now. We choose this type of sandpaper to do it because it's just, it's quicker, because it's coarser, but because you're not putting the pressure on there, you're not actually really doing any harm or anything like that to it, and you're going over the surface really nicely and quickly, and it's just speeding up the process with it being a slightly more aggressive paper, and it's just working absolutely fine. Doesn't matter which way you sand, the, the purpose is just to make this, is to denib it and make it feel nice again and make sure you've not got any high spots on, on the actual leather itself. Being a very old car seat, you know, you can get little high spots on it as well where things have uh, you know, happened to it over the years. So you've just got to make sure you pay attention to detail when you're doing it. Just trying to get that little bit just there off, which we've now got, which is good. So we've done all the base here, so we've just got to go around to this section here now and do this, the actual front part where the sort of back of your knee would be on the seat. Pads flying away. that's looking and feeling better we're nearly at the stage where we're going to be wiping over with alcohol and then spraying obviously you will find probably while we're spraying we're going to get the noise of the spray we've got the fans to put on I will be putting my mask on as well so that I can spray so you may find that I sound a bit like a Dalek if I'm talking but we'll try to guide you through as best as we possibly can while I'm spraying That's feeling great. Tiny bit more just there that I didn't quite get to. Yeah, feels good. Really good. So, you don't want an awful lot of um, alcohol cleaner on here. Just a tiny amount of alcohol cleaner on your cloth. 
And we're just going to very, very gently wipe over. Obviously, it's going to look red because we're going to wipe off red dust. But very, very gently wipe over the surface like so. You don't want to put any pressure on because you're not wanting to take off any paint. Just literally wipe over the surface very, very gently. And obviously, being a solvent-based product, it will evaporate quite quick. And then we're going to obviously blow over with the airline as well. If it starts to feel sort of like sticky or tacky as you're going over with the cloth and it feels like the cloth is dragging, just stop because it means you're obviously getting too much alcohol on the surface and lasting too long. So it's just trying to mix the paint back up again. But just very, very quickly, you can see I'm really quickly going over the surface and very, very gently, that's all I'm doing. Just going over the surface real quick. It's just basically doing a final bit of um, removal of grease from fingerprints and stuff like that so that we can spray. So that's done all that. So now I'm going to blow it off with the airline. And I'm going to get gloves on as well so I don't touch it anymore. So it's going to blow away now, so excuse the noise. No, just a little tiny touch up that I want to do before we spray, which is just here on this plate here. We've not quite got the paint in there when we've gone and painted those through because of the light shadowing. So just make sure you're checking little things like this as well as you're going around. But that's just a bit of light shadowing there that we've um, picked up. Now we've got it lightly sanded and blown off with the airline that we can see that just there. And I can see another little bit just on the back end of that plate just there. we just need to sort out as well. Tiny little area there. And then I'm gonna to touch this little white spot up as well before we spray. It's just here. And again, once you start spraying, you're not gonna see that anyway, because that'll all blend in and even over, so it's gonna be absolutely great. Can't really see any other bits on there that need touching up, so I'm quite happy with those. So next stage is we're gonna put some paper in there. So we'll get the paper push right into position. Don't use old newspaper print because you could transfer the print, which is what you don't want to do. Just some form of um, like brown paper or something like that, or these are just old floor mats with our old company logo on that we're just using up from the detailing side of our business. So that's all the paper in there, as you can clearly see. We've got all that into position. There's no need to really tape it up because it's, you know, we've overlapped it sufficiently so that it's not going to be blowing through and stuff like that. So that's absolutely fine. So we'll get the top sprayed first of all. So we're going to have the fans on now as well because we're obviously in the spray booth. So 
So I've got, um, that's, that's my spray, um, spraying mask that I've got, which I'm gonna put on. So I'm gonna take my glasses off to do this. So I don't wanna go smashing them when I'm trying to get this over my head. And I don't really need to glasses that much to see what I'm doing, so I'll be fine. Okay, who's turned the lights out? No, it's fine, honestly, fine. Full of talk so the good good thing with these is they do already have a filter inside them which is good um, but we still filter the paints and then obviously put the paint through there to filter again just waiting for that to filter through the paper which it has done And then we're going to pour a small amount into the actual machine itself. Pour a small amount into the spray gun itself. And just let it filter through slowly. You're not going to need an awful lot for spraying this back. We've got more than sufficient there. So that'll just filter through and you can see the paint there, like it's filtering through, it's fine. I've got a piece of paper here because I just want to make sure that my spray pattern and everything is correct um, for what I want to do. Again, make sure the spray um, pipe is over your shoulder. I'm just going to spray on now to make sure I've got the correct pressure and spraying pattern with the fan width and the amount of paint flow. I think that looks absolutely perfectly fine to be fair. Nice fan width, nice even coverage, it's going on well. So, we'll be on with spraying now. We're gonna spray, it doesn't matter which direction you spray in, you know, it, we're gonna be going all over. It doesn't make the paint lay in any different way. It doesn't make it look any different at all. So I'm gonna sound a bit funny now because I'm gonna put my mask on now so I can't talk, uh, it might sound a bit strange. So we're following the lanes through there, or the piping, and we're going to follow all the beading through, and then we're going to infill. I'm just going to spray a coat inside where the um, armrest goes.
As you can see, it's got a really nice even coat on there now, so now I'm going to do the pleating area. Could be running out of paint, so we might want a little bit more paint. Yeah, just running out. So that's been sprayed there, as you can clearly see, with a really nice even coat. You can leave that to dry naturally if you wanted to. We're going to do exactly the same process on the base here. Um, we're just going to show you the top for the purpose of the video, because it's exactly the same thing being repeated on the bottom. But th that is like almost at the final stages now. So the next stage will be applying the clear coat lacquers. We'll probably put a second coat on here. Um, so we'll put another coating on and then we'll put two coats on the base and then we're going to be doing the lacquers and we'll show you again what we're doing with the lacquer stages because with the lacquer stages you can sand between each coating of lacquer and you want like three to four coats of lacquer on there really and you can sand between each one but dry this with a hair dryer. Do not use a hot air gun because the heat guns generate too much heat and dry the elasticity out of the product far too quickly which accelerates cracking and accelerates wear on the leather. So always dry with a lower cooler heat like a hair dryer or if you've got it, a cold air blower is even better. This particular one attaches to your airline, so the same as my compressor did with my spray painting. Attach that to the airline and go over it with cool air and that will just work with cold air and it will dry that better. Because obviously it's waterborne paint, so like we were saying before, uh, explaining about the gaps down here, heat obviously generates moisture. So if you can dry with cold air, it dries from the inside out, whereas hot air dries from the outside in. So when you're drying with hot air, it locks the moisture in that's why we use a hairdryer because it's a medium heat rather than a hot heat like a like a hot air gun so hopefully you've enjoyed that particular video as well guys that's showing you the sanding process we're doing all the sponging areas to lightly prep that ready for the paint spraying and that's showing you how we've applied the paint with the spray gun with the Devilbus SRI Pro Light spray gun and that is the Riley Pathfinder for Practical Classics magazine that's gone from the sort of bluey grey colour now to this beautiful stunning maroon as the original interior was in this car please go on there subscribe to our youtube channel hit that like button hit that subscribe button we really do appreciate everybody that follows and subscribes please support practical classics those guys down there do an amazing job subscribe to the magazine subscribe to their youtube channel and follow them on facebook and instagram thank you very much